Hi, today we are going to talk about the collaboration services, a simple and at the same time very powerful solution. The GUI is very helpful. Here we can see what the version of the product is. And we can see the status. If you go to a specific publication, you can see all your publications in the right side window in the GUI. And we can see when it was created and modified. We can see uh, how many Active Directory objects have been published, how many free busy objects have been published or calendar items have been published. Free busy publications. Ideally you don't mix them with other type of publications and publish free busy separately. This will give you more granular control if you need to troubleshoot and for some reason stop or disable the publication or republish the data. Calendar publication. It's not just about creating a calendar publication. After subscriber has subscribed, he needs to go to the properties of this publication. And here he can specify to always create mailboxes and he will need to create, select a server and a mailbox database. If this step was not performed, calendar publication will not work. Now we will go and create a publication to get familiar with the tool. We can populate our publication with containers or use or with users explicitly. There is a default limitation, we can increase the in amount of objects being visible, but this will slow the tool down. We can use custom LDAP filters, sometimes it's a good idea to use a filter like mail or mail nickname equals asterisk, which means we want to select all mail enabled objects. I'm using a filter just to show users where the name begins with A. I have the ability to remove some of the objects, exclude them or add them to the publication. I can import and export the list of the users which might come in handy. And when I create a publication I can review all the attributes which will be published. Sometimes there is a business need to not publish some of the attributes, so I have the ability to go and unselect some of them. The tool offers to publish with minimum populated attributes, but this is usually not a very good idea. The more attributes you publish, the better. This can be done for users, contacts and groups. In this case my pu publication contains users only. I can go and add some attributes if I need them. And once this has been done I can publish this new publication. When I publish the publication all the objects will be automatically published. There is no need to go and republish this collection. Every time when you modify or create a new publication, the tool will publish those objects. You don't have to go and publish them once more. This will slow down the process. Now let's go and check the properties of the tool. Here we can perform a test and verify our mailbox is accessible. RAS options. Since there is no RAS anymore in Exchange 2007 or 10, it is important we always select this checkbox. Then the tool will stamp all the Exchange attributes. We have an option to specify a preferred domain controller, which makes the troubleshooting easier. The tool will always use this domain controller and we can view or change our license. We can view up our branches 
we can go and modify the settings in rare scenarios this is needed you can granularly control the flow you can even configure the tool to work on specific hours only and you can set quotas synchronization is the most important part of the tool we can specify how often the tool should check for changes and here under automation we can allow the tool to go to the publisher site and delete conflicting objects basically we can merge into existing objects after we made our selection we can apply this to all subcontainers and we can go and check the settings here we can specify what the tool should do with the attributes of the existing user before it deletes this object as you can see we can keep some of the attributes or we can replace them this is very important in some environments when for example a company has acquired another company and they have a different naming convention or they badly need to preserve the email address of the user they don't want the publisher to override this address the tool gives such an option once more we can let the tool to decide what to do with any particular attribute either to leave it in place or replace it and before the tool deletes or consumes the object it will apply those settings this gives us an option to publish objects and at the same time to publish them with all the attributes what the target already had in the place this is a nice workaround if we don't want the tool to override the attributes when publishing objects we can create some matching rules and we can allow the tool to match into existing objects not to delete those objects but match them as soon as we select an OU we can go to the settings and perform the same this is very useful when a company already had the gull populated with objects from another domain and they want to preserve those objects or most of the attributes in this case we simply allow to go and match into this OU we can also go and create a pre-matching rule for example if a person left the company and we want another person to receive all those mails we can go and force the tool to match and merge two completely different objects we just need to go through the wizard and we can tell the tool take this source user and match this user into a different target user and again after this rule has been configured we can go and specify what we want to do with the particular attributes we can merge them or leave them in place we can create as many rules as we want at any given moment we can go and modify our settings and change them instead of creating those rules manually we can import them in this case I'm going to ask the tool to decide what to do and the tool knows it better so it will match proper users in case I've made the mistake I can ask the tool to find and match the objects for me I can granularly specify the settings for the Active Directory publication and perform the same set the scheduling and quotas namespaces is a very important part of the tool when we deploy the tool for the first time it will show you all the namespaces all email addresses existing in the environment it is important to remove them and leave only in place the one which you need because usually you create only one connector for one particular namespace again if there is business need and you need the tool to stamp a different email address you can specify it here 
we can configure the settings for FreeBSY and for Calendar, we can clean up our packet queue and we can purge the suspended objects usually we seldom modify the settings but in case you are getting alarmed way too often you can change this rule you can configure the tool to send your email notifications or send them per net send here we can configure the tool how often it should perform a backup this is the only place where we can specify how to proceed with the upgrades and here we can configure the GUI settings we can see all errors and uh, notifications in the GUI the tool will inform us about each step we can review our non-applied objects, we can see who is our synchronization partner and the same information can be also found in different log files if you go to program files, quest software collaboration services you will see there is a folder named ACS logs here you will find our alerts log file this file contains absolutely all the entries you can see in the GUI this file is very useful and if we are not sure we can run a quick search and verify when a particular object has been published and if this object has been published at all if you go to the debug folder you will find different logs and the name of the log is usually very helpful as you can see each part of the tool has a receiver and sender log file and there are some general log files which cover the procedure calendar synchronization has a sender and receiver log file the FreeBSY also has a sender and receiver log file where you can trace the progress of the published or received information you can view the core transport how it is working if you have issues with the mail flow for example you can go and open the log files which explain how the MAPI calls are working in this case you can see the tool already mentioned the user for which I tried to create a rule when working with mail enabled objects the tool always is using the legacy exchange DN you can review those logs intuitively when troubleshooting and when trying to obtain additional information about the tool and how it works there is a folder with archived log files which is also quite helpful when troubleshooting you will find the backups, you will find the packet history you can sort it by day and if you are for example running out of disk space you can clean up your disk space and flush those objects manually in my case I have lots of old files from the last year which will be definitely never delivered again so I can safely delete them a temp folder in this case we are not talking about temp data this data is important we never touch it we don't delete it the upgrader folder contains the redistributables the MSI package which will be pushed out to the branches in case we decide to upgrade the tool those are the log files which you can find when troubleshooting or reviewing the progress there is also a folder with DLL files but here you will also find some executables for example the matching rules viewer it's a nice and helpful utility if you forgot what rules have been created you can find and review them here this tool allows you to administer those matching rules you can delete them or refresh and update them this was a very short overview of the tool and what it offers at first glance it's a simple and straightforward tool which was designed to publish information and populate the gull but in fact it can do much more and if you think outside of the box you can find lots of useful features 
which will allow you to cover any business need and to implement any workaround.